make decisions, and they have different ways of evaluating people. Assistant coaches become heavily involved with some organizations. Others rely strictly on their scouts. Others, the GM has the final say. Others, it goes all the way up to the owner in some cases. But I think it varies from, from team to team, but I think the best way to do it is if everybody in the organization is on the same page when each pick is made. In and one it, sentence, though, let me ask you about the San Diego pick. Mm. Tolliver, in just one sentence, does it make sense? No, not at all. To trade up for Billy Joe Tolliver when you could have sat there where you were and probably got a Rodney Pete or some or a Jeff Graham or yeah. a quarterback like that. There's Terrence shopping. Jones from Tulane is still there. There are three or four quarterbacks on the board at this point that are better than Billy Joe Tolliver, who looked going in to be no better than a fourth, fifth, sixth round pick. It's a long sentence, but that's okay. Well, Tolliver, they Tolliver. trade up to get him, and still you got to believe they're going to be shopping Kevin Kiley, who's at Anaheim, still pop, probably shopping in the supplemental draft with a shot at Rosenbaum, maybe Walsh. And I know you've got some thoughts on that. Well I, well, I have seen Tolliver there. I'm out in the Los Angeles area, and as you might expect, there's some frustration and surprise that Rodney Pete has not been picked yet. But I watched Billy Joe Tolliver play a couple of years ago and throughout his career at Texas Tech. That's one of the reasons you haven't seen him. Texas Tech, not on TV a whole lot. He's a Joe Cap type. He has a tremendous arm. He's a raw kid, but he's a leader. He's a rah-rah type of guy. And I don't know that San Diego doesn't need a player like that at quarterback. And I don't know that it's not such a good shot. He's a guy that could develop. He hasn't developed very well to this point, at least not to be a top pick, but he's a guy that could develop, and I believe that he could help that San Diego team quite a bit. So Billy Joe Tolliver versus Rodney Pete, no. I think, uh, I think what it is is Billy Joe Tolliver and maybe something for the future. All right, we'll be back with four from the 1989 draft on ESPN following these messages. business people I thought all insurance companies were the same believe me there's a world of difference out there I know because thanks to the Hartford we survived the kind of fire that would have wiped out most companies but with the Hartford's people behind my business we met payroll we we got back on our feet 
So please, don't tell me all insurance companies are the same. They're not. When you need us most, we're at our best. The Hartford. A double pleasure's waiting for you. A double looking back at Durham, North Carolina, where that's David Braxton, who just got off the phone with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, David Braxton, the uh, pick of the Vikings in the second round, linebacker from Wake Forest. And he, of course, was down with Robert Massey and our Jimmy Roberts at, uh, in Durham. And our congratulations to Braxton, who goes uh, with the Vikings. Their first overall selection. Next up, as we try to close out the second round here in the next uh, 20, 30 minutes, will be the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, gives us great pleasure, gives me great personal pleasure to... Uh, say hi to a friend, uh, Commissioner Pete Rozelle, who this is your 30th draft. I mean, I, I mean, hate to keep reciting the numbers every <laughs> time I see you, but you have to be a little bit melancholy because I know the draft day has always been very special for you. Is that right? It is. You know, the whole country's watching, particularly the last 10 years that ESPN has carried on television. But uh, the teams are interested, their fans are interested, and all the colleges want to see where their players are going. So it's a it's a fun day, like the Super Bowl. Those are two of the uppers you have as commissioner. And I imagine the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies would be too. But the, the draft, uh, commissioner, is kind of a, it's the unofficial start to the next season, a new season, right? It really is. I, we're fortunate to get this type of coverage in April on our season. The regular season, of course, won't start until September. But there's tremendous coverage in the off season. I think that helps the sport a lot. Do you remember back, well, certainly when uh, you were with the Rams or also, let's say, in the 60s, your earlier years as commissioner, the draft, what, people would sit down uh, maybe with one book and draft, what, out of publications? Well, the Ram owner, Dan Reese, was, uh, he felt very strongly about the draft. I think the Rams were probably ahead of most of the other teams, but, but actually in, in the 50s, when we go to draft meetings, some teams, it wasn't a complete exaggeration to say that they would take a Street and Smith preseason right. football annual. Right. And, sort of get some information out of it. It wasn't quite as sophisticated then as now. That was a long day. I mean, you went many more. Now you go 12 rounds of 16, 18. I mean, it went, it went forever sometimes, didn't it? I think we had 30 rounds. 30 rounds. I mean, Few, you, fewer number of teams, however. Yeah, but you lock everyone in a room, and then uh, when you were done, just let everyone out, or what? Well, I was locked in a room. Yeah, that, right. that was during the 50s, and right. I wasn't commissioner, but uh, they last a long time. You had uh, potentially a very difficult decision to make this year, commissioner, when, when Barry Sanders applied to, uh, to get in the draft. Um, it's something that really you know if you probably try and fight it in court it's not going to go your way I mean, what were the, the things that weighed in making your decision on both sides and how tough was it to make the allow them in well you know I feel I think most of the clubs do too that uh, you'd sure prefer to have a player complete his four years of college uh, now you know whether he's a five beta, beta cap or not uh, I think the four years exposure to copy college helps everyone mature better and uh, in the case of Barry Sanders, uh, it wasn't a question of going to court. Uh, he'd already hired an agent. The NC had de would declare him ineligible. So the case was whether he could uh, sit out for a year or whether he could play in the NFL in 1989 because he was, de he was through in college. And uh, that's frankly why we allowed him in. Are you concerned? I mean, you still what, will be involved with the league uh, forever, really, whether you're commissioner or just consultant to the new commissioner, parentheses S. Um, that other, you know, that the list will get more and more every year. That's a tough one. It is a tough one. I think that to try and preserve some part of a rule, we just have to treat each case individually. Uh -huh. And I, I certainly hope that the, there isn't a rush because many players would be making mistakes. They wouldn't be ready emotionally and physically, so they'd end up not having a college education or the four years exposure to college and not making it in the NFL. Uh, 